Today we're going to rebuild an aquamatic valve. Aquamatic valves are incredibly strong and long-lasting valves that can be on equipment for years before rebuilds are needed. If they begin to leak air or water or are slow to actuate, or if they leak when closed, it's time for a rebuild. First thing you want to do is identify your valve number. The markings can be hard to see and sometimes a 6 can look like a 5. The parts kit is going to have the valve number on it, so make sure that your valve kit matches up with your valve. I like to lay out all the tools that I'm going to use on a rubber mat because when you take these apart they often leak water out. The tools you're going to need are channel lock pliers, a 3 8 socket wrench with a half inch deep socket, a half inch wrench, a medium flat blade screwdriver, a half inch breaker bar, and a 1 and 3 16 deep socket that's the half inch drive. The 425 valve uses a smaller socket. You'll also need a pick tool, a small wire brush, clean gloves, and a couple of cleaning rags. The first thing to do is to cut off your air supply. Make sure that there's no air on the line and then remove it from the top of the valve. Then you take off and remove the six half inch bolts holding the cap of the valve on. After the bolts are out, the cap should come right off. If it's stuck, you can easily pry it up with a screwdriver or just tap on it with a small hammer and encourage it to pop off. Take a look at the inside of the lid for rust and or debris. If it's crusted up, you'll need to clean it and make sure the mating surfaces are clean and smooth. Then look at the valve body and you'll see a Teflon coated rubber gasket. It may look okay or it may be torn. That's getting replaced, so it needs to come out, and we can throw that away. To do that, we'll use the medium straight blade screwdriver and a half-inch wrench to hold the slotted shaft steady while loosening and removing the nut. Save the stainless steel nut, even though you're going to get a new one in the kit. The originals always seem to go on better and stay on longer than when I try to reuse uh, than when I try to use the new ones. Remove the circular bronze plate and take off the copper washer. You can discard the washer because you're going to get a brand new one in the kit. Take the bronze lid and look at it sideways. You'll notice one side has a sharp 90 degree angle and the other side is chamfered. The chamfered smooth side goes against the rubber gasket so it doesn't cut into it. Now you can remove the gasket and get to the nut plate below it. On the bottom of the Teflon coated rubber gasket is another round bronze plate with a similar chamfered edge on the gasket side. There will be another copper washer that needs to be removed. The rebuild kit will have a new one so we can recycle the old one in the metals bin. We'll be looking at the nut plate with the stainless steel threaded rod in the middle. You want to press the shaft down so that we can put on the 1 and 13 sixteenths deep socket over the top. Make sure the top of the socket or make sure the socket is pressed all the way down onto the bronze nut because if it's not you can round off the nut when you're trying to take it off. I like to use a cordless impact gun to remove the nut but you can also use a half inch breaker bar. If it starts to round the bronze nut then just stop. Make sure the socket is fully down on the nut and if you have to use a hammer to hammer it down to make sure it's tight, go ahead and make sure it's on there really well. If that still doesn't work, you can heat the cast iron body of the valve around the threaded area with a propane torch. Make sure you just heat the valve body and not the nut plate. Then try again to remove it. It's always worked for me, so hopefully you won't have any trouble. When it spins free, remove the nut plate and pull the shaft out from the bottom. Remove the original o-ring from the nut plate with your screwdriver and now it's a good time to burnish the shaft so that it moves up and down on the nut plate. You'll look at it and you'll see that it's kind of um, worn and not quite smooth but I like to use red scotch bright pads for polishing up the stainless steel. 
I'll wrap it around the shaft and spin the shaft back and forth about 100 times. If the Scotch Bright uh, company wants to send me a case for the endorsement, that would be very cool. Voila. Now that it's clean, we'll clean out the threads with the wire brush. There's a nut on the bottom of the plunger holding the plunger seal in place. To remove the half inch nut, you're going to need to hold on to the plunger shaft right below the threads you just cleaned out with the channel locks. Make sure the channel locks are not touching the threads and hold it tightly to remove the plunger shoe nut. Remove the circular bronze plate and pry out the original rubber seat. Now that that's out, clean everything up. Make sure to remove the old Loctite from the threads under the plunger shoe. Install the new rubber seal onto the plate. Clean the bottom of the bronze plate with the red Scotch-Brite. And when the plate is clean, you can reinstall it over the new rubber seat. Now from the rebuild kit, remove the tiny tube of the 565 Loctite. Use a razor knife to cut off the tip of the nozzle and apply just a little bit on the threads of the plunger shaft that are sticking up above the plate. Now put the half inch nut back on and hand tighten. Use channel locks again to make sure the nut is tight and the half inch wrench. Now we'll work on the nut plate. I start by removing the interior o-ring with the hook tool. Then cleaning the plate and the threads very well. Next we're going to install the o-ring from the rebuild kit. You'll notice the new one is blue. Nut plate has a slot in the middle that the blue o-ring fits into. Now it's time to pull out the silicone grease from your rebuild kit. Here I put on clean gloves for reassembly. It's best to put a good layer of the silicone grease onto the plunger shaft but not on the threads where you're going to thread on the stainless steel nuts. Rub it around really well and then inside the nut plate also where the o-ring is. Rub it around with your pinky finger if you have to but get it in there. Put more silicone grease on the o-ring and threads of the nut plate and rub it in. This next step is really important. If you use a wire brush and clean the threads of the nut plate and the valve body where it threads into, you won't have to worry about cross-threading or it won't be so easy to cross-thread that bronze into the cast iron. When you're done cleaning those threads, clean them some more. And then some more. I think you get the idea. You only have one chance to put it in right. Now, with a rotating motion, I slowly work the plunger shaft through the hole in the nut plate, being careful not to have the sharp edge of the shaft damage the o-ring. Usually if you put it in at a slight angle and walk it around, it goes in nice and smooth. When it's in, it should ride in and out of the hole in the nut plate smoothly with no restrictions. And now it's a good idea to re-lubricate the shaft one more time. All right, we're almost done. I like to use the socket to hand tighten the nut plate into the valve body. Then, using the breaker bar to tighten it down, and I use the, the breaker, not the impact, because we don't want to crush the O-ring that's around the outside perimeter of that nut plate. Once it's hand tight, I give it another quarter turn, and that's usually good enough. With everything clean, again, we start to reassemble the diaphragm. The new copper washer from the kit goes in onto the plunger shaft, then the bronze plate with the sharp side down towards the copper washer, so the smoother rounded side up towards where the gasket will go. Then we put the new Teflon coated rubber gasket in, dimpled side down. Then the top plate goes on with again the smooth side or chamfered side against the rubber, the flat side this time is up. Now the new copper washer from the rebuild kit, some more Loctite 565 on the threads, and I use the original nut again on the sh shaft, and we'll retighten it using the screwdriver and the half-inch wrench. 
Now, line up the holes in the gasket with the ones on the valve body. Notice that the top and bottom holes are different than the sides. The top and bottoms are flat. The sides are dimpled out. So once you see the, the difference between the top and the sides and the bottom, we're going to go ahead and clean up the six bolts that hold the cap on and in place. So now we'll put the cap back on. Checking the orientation, we always want to be mindful of the way that the airline will connect. This In this situation, the airline is facing up. Then the six bolts are tightened up, but not gorilla tight, just hand tight. You don't want to over pinch that gasket. Now we'll reconnect the airline. And lastly, this is just my recommendation. To increase the life of the valves, I found it's a great idea not to slam them with the air tank pressure, which is usually 90 to 120 PSI or more. I like to use a small air pressure regulator and crank down the pressure to about 40 PSI. That seems to operate the valves very smooth, and at that pressure, it doesn't slam. It also puts less stress on the gasket that we just replaced. Now it's time to restart the system and check for leaks. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck. And if you need seal kits, check the link below.